It sure is pretty country around here. When you look it over, it makes you feel like you had seven drinks or heard glad news. Yes, indeed. You know, my dad once said to me, Steve, he said, my dad was a great dad. He had a little star on the end of his nose. He got it there by poking in two other people's business. You know, I kind of take after dad. But up to the present, telling my nose has been plum lucky. Did you say anything? No? That's kind of what I thought. Me. I'm sorry, ma'am. I did act kind of sudden-like. Well, you certainly did. Well, if I hadn't, you'd still be lying there on the floor, and it wouldn't be any of my doing. Yes, sir. A bullet slanted right there where your head would have been. I'm sorry I was so rude. I'm Linda Forbes. I live at King's Crossing. I'm Steve McLean, just passing through. Oh, I see. Now that everything is peaceful and we're kind of friendly-like, would you mind telling me something? Why, no. That little ruckus we just passed through, is that anything new? Well, it's not exactly new. We've had a good many since I've been in the crossing. That's so. And I bet they haven't caught anybody. No, they haven't. Mm -hmm. Sounds interesting. You know, I might try a hand at it myself. Yes, Cindy. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll take a walk outside and listen to him squawk about the stagecoach holdup. On time. Well, howdy, Judge. Howdy. Howdy, Ace. Reckon you're mighty glad to have Linda back home again. Yes, sir. Sure has been lonesome without her. Held up near the Ford. What did he get? Nothing. They held up the stage and didn't get nothing? 
That's right. Thanks for that young fellow over there. He's mighty handy with his gun. He got two of them. The other scooted. Look here, stranger. Maybe you're a mite too quick on the trigger. Maybe. How you know they wasn't aiming to take the coach? Looks to me like you've cheated the company out in a couple of passengers. You can go back and pick them up. They're still there. You won't have any trouble recognizing them. They've got masks on. Mr. McLean, this is my father, Judge Forbes. Right glad to know you, Judge. Glad to know you too, sir. This is Ace Pringle. Howdy, Pringle. Howdy, McLean. I reckon we all owe you a debt for your action today. Yes, sir. Linda's been telling me how you saved her life. I'm beholden to you, sir. It wasn't anything, Judge. I just happened to be handy at the time. You're putting it modest, son. Linda and I are grateful, aren't we, Linda? Grateful is hardly the word. And I do hope to see you again soon. And I hope you get your hope. Mm. Hey, ain't the box going through? No, had orders to hold it over. Just the mail going through. What'd you find out about him? They don't know much about him, except he was hanging around Hawkstown for about a week. What come off? Well, Leif Stroger picked a fight with him. He outdrawed Leif, covered him, and just laughed at him. Outdrawed Leif? Mm. Where's he going? Twin Forks. All aboard? Oh, pardon me, please. See, you got another gun. Yeah. You better get it nailed to your arm so you can't drop it the next time you need it. Huh? Hey, ain't you going? No. Nope. I've changed my mind. I'm kind of taking a fancy to the scenery. I want to look it over. I'm glad to hear you changed your mind about leaving it, Mr. McLean. Now, is there anything we can do for you? You could help me out a bit, Judge, if you're a mind to. Glad to. If I like it around here well enough to stay on, I'm going to need a horse. Well, that ought to be an easy order to fill. Jim Thatcher's got a string located just beyond us. Yeah, thanks. Maybe Mr. McLean would like to come to supper. Oh, pardon me for being thoughtless, Mr. McLean. Will you come out and sit down to supper with us? That's a mighty appealing idea, Judge. Buckboard's right over here. Bye, Ace. Bye. Hey, look. He forgot his grip. We'll open it. Hurry up. Well, what do you think about him? I think he's grand. And you handle him beautifully. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> he likes you, Steve. Well, that's mutual. I had a long talk with him last night, and he was telling me he thought an awful lot of you. He did? Yeah, and I told him that was mutual, too. <laughs> I got a string along with him. You know what they say about horse sense. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Steve. Let's ride along the river. You know, I have never met up with anybody whose ideas are so pleasing like. Now, take my dad. Oh, you and your dad. Come on. It looks like we've got company. Oh, it's Ace Pringle. Is that anything to be so joyful about? <laughs> Howdy, Miss Linda. Hello, Ace. Howdy, McLean. Howdy, Pringle. Just riding over to see you, Paul. He's home. I reckon I'd find him home along about this time. We were hoping you'd join us. But of course, if it's business... Oh, sorry, but I've got to see the judge. You see, he's all head up about the way things is going down at the cross. I should think you would be, too. Oh, I am, Miss Linda. Me and the judge are going to get together and check up things and jerk them up short. You can tell the judge he can count on me to help, if he's a mind to. I sure will. We need men like you around here, McLean. Say, why don't you drop into my place sometime and we can kind of plan things out. Thanks. Maybe I'll do that. That's fine. Make it soon. 
Goodbye, folks. Bye. He wasn't riding over to see your pa. Wasn't he? No. Like him? Well, Dad likes him. He says without him, there wouldn't be any law or order around these parts. Might be a smart idea if he took to riding the coaches. Ace Pringle ride the stagecoach? Sure, then there wouldn't be so many holdups. What are you talking about? When he got noise around that Ace was riding, why, those road agents would split the wind getting out of these parts. <laughs> oh, there you go. Come on, tell me about your dad. Oh, well, honey, when dad was going on 73, he was kind of losing interest in life. So he took up knife fighting. Knife fighting? <laughs> That's it now. Come on. Going into Aces now. Come on. How is Jack? Oh, well, hello. Just having a little friendly game. Want to sit in? That can come later. You mentioned a while back something about wanting to talk to me. That's right. Uh, Joe, yeah. play my hand and uh, play him close. Like I play my own, eh? <laughs> Gear him up and keep him up. This is gun, Rusty. Hold on, Sheriff. You keep out of this, Ace. I'm not keeping out of anything that goes on in my place of business. You're a hunting cover, Ace. This year, just between me and him. He is mighty high-handed to me, and I ain't liking it. What do you got against him? A gun. And I'd be much obliged if you'd take it out of my bag. What's this all about? Well, I ain't laying my cards on the table just yet. But if one half of what Rusty and me has heard about him is true, he ought to be hung up. You're making a mistake. He's used to it. You keep your mouth shut. And you hear me out, Ace. We're waiting. Well, there ain't gonna be no rope stretching. I'm gonna run him out of town. Oh, I run other coyotes out without no objections, and I ain't a standing for none now. Gents, I want you to all bear witness that I ain't taking no part in this. And I'm still protesting the sheriff's action. I'm advertising you men to come go along and see that everything's on the square and above board. Come in, Ace. I'm staying here. All right. But I'm gonna let you know right now that the way you tuck up again me ain't a setting none too well. Get going. Enough of that. It's just a lament, Sheriff. I'm right mournful at leaving. Now you get going and keep a going. Thanks, Sheriff. And I won't stop to pull no wildflowers. When he's well out of sight, let him have it. And make no mistake. You better tail him, Rusty, and make sure he leaves. <clears throat> Much obliged, boys. I'm gonna wait here for Rusty. All right, Sheriff.
Let me down. Hey, hey! Loosen that rope, it hurts. Hey, let me loose. Welcome home. Hey, let me loose, let me down. Loosen that rope, it hurts. Let me out of here. Let me go. One more peep out of you and a dead buzzard will drop out of this tree. <laughs> It's broke. It's broke. It... Say, what's the idea of jumping on top of me out in the tree, you double-crossing hound? I didn't jump on you. I fell out of the tree. Uh, you liver livered puppy, you is... understand it. It don't sound like him. I thought a heap of that boy. I figured you ought to know the straight of things, so we come here first. I don't believe a word of it. Well, Miss Linda, knowing how things were between you and him, I didn't expect you to. What are you looking for, Sheriff? Why, <clears throat> it's that old rheumatism of mine that hurt me again. Oh. Hmm? Now, Linda. Why, Judge, the minute we got him outside of town, he broke down and confessed. Didn't he, Rusty? He sure did. Sat there on his horse, just a blubbering, and a thanking me over and over again for letting him go. A grown man, crying just like a baby. It made me sick. Plum disgusting. It just makes my blood boil to think that I didn't get myself a cowhide and wear it out on him. I'll have whooped him all over town so everybody can see. And I will the next time. That is, if I ever I meet him face to face again. But I reckon there ain't no hope for that. Howdy, Sheriff. <gasps> Whoa! <laughs> Give me a room. He's probably laying up in the gulch by now with the buzzards making a meal off him. Yeah, and I thought I'd fuss with Ace, acting like he was his brother. <laughs> <laughs> you sure done it pretty, Ace. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I owe my success to. Use your brains, boys. That's what they was give to you for. Set them up, Gabe. Hello, Tommer. How goes it? Uh, didn't do so well. Run out of grub. Pretty nigh I didn't get here. I'm pretty hungry. I'd like to thank you, partner. But I just got cleaned out. Maybe the boys and aces can fix you up. <laughs> Much obliged. What do you mean, coming into my place, playing on that contraption? I thought I'd squeeze out a few tunes and get enough of something to eat. Well, squeeze out your tunes for Bella and the gals up on the back trail. Well, all I want... I'm not interested in what you want. Get out and stay out! <laughs> What's the matter, old-timer? Stumble over something? Well, not exactly. 
I was in there playing my old concertina so that I could scrape up enough to get something to eat. And a big fella, the boss, I reckon, roughed me up and kicked me out. I can't figure it. You must be making some mistake. Why, well, the boys in there are right friendly. Yeah? Well, one of them wasn't a minute ago. Leastwise, that's the way it appeared to me. That's funny. When I play the harmonica for them, they holler for more. I have a hard time quitting. Come on, I'll show you. All right. But if you don't mind, I'll stay a mite behind you. He's gonna get it. Well, hello, McLean. You're a sight for sore eyes. See, what'd I tell you, partner? Just can't figure it out. Pringle, my old friend here. What's your name, partner? Slocum. Dizzy Slocum. My old friend Dizzy here says someone put the boots to him and threw him out. Now, that ain't friendly. Now, I'm right sorry about that. But what happened here today was still a rankling me. I apologize, Mr. Slocum. There you are, Dizzy. That's fine, ain't it? Shall I play? No, not just yet. Looks like you and the sheriff have got things settled. You know, I figured that uh, when he cooled off, he'd see things different. Yep. When the sheriff came down to earth, he saw things much different. Now, ain't that fine. Step up to the bar. I'm setting them up. Thanks. Come on, Dizzy. Hey, hey, I got to see you, hey. I see you. Howdy, Sheriff. Just in time to join the reunion. McLean, I got a bone to pick with you. Give it to Dizzy. He's hungry. Sure am. Sheriff, McLean's been telling me how you and him has buried the hatchet. I'm glad to hear it. Well, I ain't a wanting to go off half caught, but I'm a warning you that me and Rust is going to keep an eye on you. That being the case, there's a little matter needs talking over. Don't bump into me at night, because in the dark I can't tell friend from foe. <laughs> That's one on you, Sheriff. Step up to the bar and name it. Gabe, set him up. No, McLean, I'm going to be right sorry after you leave us. I'm not aware I mentioned leaving. Oh, no, no, I didn't mean it that way. What I'm trying to say is that uh, having you around sort of livens the place up. Well, we aim to please. Is that right, Dizzy? That's right. Shall I play now? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Rusty, have you met my friend Dizzy? No. Dizzy, this is Rusty. Glad to it. Pleased to meet you, Park. Have you met the sheriff? No, not officially. Well, you must meet the sheriff. Sheriff, have you met my partner Dizzy? No, I ain't. Dizzy, sheriff. Pleased to meet you, sheriff. Howdy. You're meeting real folks now, Dizzy. Mm, see that. Gents, to my friend McLean and his partner, Dizzy.
That's mighty kind of you, gents. But it doesn't seem right to drink to yourself. Kind of thought Dizzy and me here should drink to somebody else. What do you think, Dizzy? Well, what's the matter with us? Oh, nothing, but it just ain't etiquette, that's all. Ooh. To you, gents. sweet before. Thank you, ma'am. I reckon the folks in the street think this coyote's howling. Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, nothing of the sort. You know, you and me could make some of them big camps and clean up. Say, that's a smart idea. We could call ourselves Dizzy and Steve, players of admiring music. Oh, <laughs> that sounds grand. When do we light out? <laughs> when I give the word. But right now, I've got a little business to attend to. Well, the sooner the better. It's plumb sickening. What is these? The way he's handling you two. Got you looking hobbled and hogtied. Uh, but Ace, you... Don't you worry about me. I'm going to do the dealing from here on. And I'm going to stack the deck, understand? Why do you suppose McLean is so keen about hanging around the crossing? Well, there's the judge's daughter. Leave her out of it. All right, Ace. He engaged passage through to the forks on the stage, didn't he? But he got off here, Ace. I know he did. And he'd have gone through to the forks if something he hadn't expected come off. What is that, Ace? They took the strong box off and they're holding it for Thursday's stage. You're right. I know I'm right. He's after the box the same as we are. We've got to get the jump on him. What are you aiming to do? You're going to shoot it out with him right here on the street. Me? Yeah. And Rusty's going to help you. Me? Sit down, both of you. And get this straight. Rusty will be a piece behind you when you meet up with McLean. Rusty will be packing a rifle and keeping out of sight. When you go up to McLean, you tell him it's you or him, and that the crossing ain't big enough to hold both of you. I don't know, Ace. I know you don't, but you listen to me. You tell McLean that when you throw your hat to the ground, you both go for your guns. But Ace, he beat Lay Stroger to the draw. And you know, Leith. You ain't gonna throw your hat to the ground. Oh, Ada. No. When you take your hat off like that, Rusty drills it. But what the judge and the rest of them are gonna say? <laughs> I've got that figured, too. We'll tell them you was doing your... That you walked up to McLean to ask him a few questions. When you took off your hat to mop your head, he went for his guns. Rusty, suspecting as much, had him covered and plugged him to save you. Oh, well, that's different. And I'm a-hiding with a rifle. That's right. And when it's all over, we'll give you a vote of thanks. You sure are a wonder, Ace. McLean just came out of Grady's lunchroom. Fine, fine. Get going. Ain't hey, nothing can go wrong. <laughs> nothing can go wrong? Nothing. No reason why you can't stay at my cabin. There's plenty of room. Well, I wouldn't put you all that trouble. Good. Now that's that. <laughs> all right. Be sure and keep him covered, Rusty. Oh, sh sure, Sheriff. But don't you get between him and me. Yeah. Huh? Oh, no, no. Now you keep your eyes open and keep out of sight and remember the signal. Sure.
Howdy, Sheriff. I'm glad to see you up and about. Kind of taken sudden-like, wasn't you? I ain't here to trade words with you, McLean. Is that so? What's on your mind? This town ain't big enough to hold me and you. Oh, step back on my dizzy. Sheriff, I'm not leaving. So it's up to you to pull out if you're a mind to. Well, I give you a fair warning. Now then, we'll settle this thing in the usual manner. When my hat hits the ground, we go for our guns. Are you sure you ain't sort of dazed? Huh? Well, I'm giving you a fighting chance for your life. Are you gonna take it? I reckon I'll have to, as much as I hate it. Sure you won't change your mind? You hinder talking yourself out of this, my friend? I'm not trying to, and I'm not your friend. Get ready. Any last messages, Sheriff? Hmm? Get ready. Get ready. What's the matter, Sheriff? A little something go wrong? Turn around when I'm speaking to you. I have an idea whose brand you're wearing, Sheriff. You might as well have the tool handy, Pringle. Likely as not, you'll be electing a new Sheriff. And while you're making up your mind, I've got some declaring to do. And I don't want to be interrupted while I'm at it. I'm not much of a hand at speech making, so I'll get down to cases. I like the town. I like some of the folks in it. And I'm not leaving until I'm in the notion. And if anyone tries to cross me, his hide is likely to be hanging on my cabin door. Now pass the word along to your friend in the tent. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Dizzy. You see, Ace, Drop I... Drop your hands, you muckle-headed blunderer. Huh? Oh. Now, pick up your things. Oh. Whoa. Morning, Miss Linda. Morning, Dizzy. Is Steve around? No, ma'am, he ain't. Didn't you meet him down at the river? How was to meet him at the river? What made you think that? Well, boy brung him a note a little while back, and Steve said he had to meet you there. Did you change your mind? She must have forgot something. <laughs> Just can't tell nothing about gals. Pretty work, Joe. I couldn't have done better myself. Thanks. When the rocks get through messing them up, he won't be so easy to look at. Too bad. His horse must have stumbled and he hit his head. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty careless riding, I calls it. Go mm. on.
What's wrong? We're bearing sad news, partner. Is it about Steve? Yeah. We were just in time to see him thrown from his horse, lit in the river. Yep, landed right on his head, and the water carried him away. It sure is too bad. Yeah. We stopped along the way and pulled some wildflowers. We figured we owed him that much. Where do they generally put them? Usually put them on the door, so I've heard. Hang them on the latch. They might look real nice there. Too bad he wasn't running down the street in town. Why? I'd have dumped him right in the sheriff's lap. I don't like the way folks around here is a-talking. Me neither. We'll give them something to talk about after we clear out. Is Slim and Ab coming here first? They're about due at the express office now to snake the box out of the safe. By morning, we'll be well on our way. Let's step into the bar in case anything goes wrong with the express office. And folks can't point a finger at us. Yeah, in case they get caught, Slim and Ab is doing it on their own. Yeah. Then we can make an example of them. <laughs> <laughs> and left the window open for us. Nice of him. Then it's pretty dead, these. According to my ideas. Then we separate and take care of ourselves. It's gone. What? The safe was open and the box was gone. McLean. He beat us to it. When I come in, the safe was open, but the box was gone. They didn't take nothing but the box. I got an idea who done it. Well, whoever done it must have dropped this. I found it on the floor this morning. It's McLean's. Now then, I reckon you'll believe what I've been trying to tell you, Judge. Come on. here till they report to us about the robbery. It was 
McLean robbed the express office, all right. The agent found his mouth organ by the safe. He can't skin out of this. Come on. I don't want to miss seeing him swing. told you, Dizzy, and meet up with me like I said. Now get around behind the cabin. Yep, yep. Howdy, Judge. Steve, there's things that need a lot of explaining. We gotta have a talk with you. I'm ready and waiting. If you don't mind, I'll take your gun. All right, Judge. So long as you. Well, gents, what's on your mind? Plenty. Maybe you know something about the express office being robbed last night. Maybe? Uh-huh. See that judge? He admits it. I said maybe. You needn't say no more. We got plenty of proof. All right, boys, look around. So that's how it is, eh? You're throwing in on the side of McLean and helping him to make a getaway. What are you talking about? We're taking charge from now on. Ab, get down there and grab that box and hand it to Slim. Sheriff. Is that all, Sheriff? Not by a jug full it ain't. Take a look at this. I see, Judge, see him reach for it. It's gone, ain't it? I reckon it is. Uh, that's enough. He admitted it. Grab him, boys. Come on. We'll string him up. Hang him, he ain't going to find the box. Well, I reckon by the time we haul you up and down three or four times, you'll be plumb ready and willing to talk. Maybe. Hey! Pringle and the other fellas has got Miss Lynn in a strong box. They're scooting away with them. Come on, everybody. Hold on, Judge. It's a trick to try to get us away. No, to believe him, Judge. I've seen him. Uh, Dizzy took up a McLean here, Judge, and he's just a lying trying to save him. He's not lying, and it won't hurt none to find out. Come on, boys. is just about cutting me in two. 
Well, give it a hand. Let him carry it a while. All right. We'll hold it up. You too. Put that box inside. Slim, get in there and take care of the girl. I'll do the driving. Seen anything of a couple of homers and a girl? Yeah, it stole the coach and went that way. Thanks.
Everything is right peaceful like, honey. But Steve, darling. I'll tell you all about it after I deliver this bundle into town. Working secret like for the world father best nobody knowing it. Fool me too. You sure clean that thing up. Yeah, well, now you know me and Steve we sort of work together. Is that so? Yeah. Won't surprise me none now that the sheriff and Leslie Dunfer, if the judge elected me sheriff. But why didn't you tell me, Steve? My job sort of called for working in the dark. If anybody had known what I was up to, I wouldn't have gotten very far. But from now on, you're going to tell me everything, aren't you, Steve? Well, I don't know. I better ask Dad. Oh, you and your dad. You know, Dad once said to me, Steve, he said, you know, you always called him Steve. He was going on 95 when a tornado blew the barn away. Dad lassoed it and held it steady in the air for four hours. And when the wind died down, the barn fell right on top of Dad. It kind of slowed him up a bit. He, was, he a was a great dad. <laughs> Dizzy? Oh, 